Hello and welcome back to the Sch Museum. Today is a super exciting one, which will explain what's going on with all of the Schmiemobiles being crammed in at this end of the Sch Museum. And that is because our space over on this side is at long last being filled with three more Benpak Autostacker A6W lifts. The same lifts that we have in fact over here with the four that we had installed a couple of months back, currently in operation, basically to keep all of the cars out of the way. But I have made one little blunder and I will explain that in just a moment. So we've packed in all of the cars here. We have a couple more that we still need to shuffle around. The Lotus Elise, we're gonna probably pop next door. The SF90 is tucked over at the entrance because it's still very much daily driver. But the plans all along were to have a couple more lifts installed here to extend this run with this basically floating floor on the upper deck leading down towards the mezzanine. The view from up there over the seven full lifts when they're all in place is going to be astonishing. We'll have a little bit of room still at the end, not quite enough for an eighth lift, but it will give us an extra bit of space that we can use also. So the plan today is that the team are going to be coming down, the team from LiftMaster, to basically start the installation, to bring all of the parts along. It takes a couple of days to get lifts like these installed. But before that, and before we get to the little blunder that I've made, let's rewind back to shuffling all the cars to get them back here. Rewind then. We need to work out which cars we're moving where. <laughs> I have no idea. This is, this is where you come in. I just, I'll just move them, you tell me what to do. Well, we've made a little bit of progress. Normally, yep. at the end, we'd have the Clio up top above the E500. They are currently here because we're going to take those around to Barn 2. Yes, that's, we now have the space, right? And we obviously don't want anything getting damaged or dirty where possible, so these may as well go next door. So that's the plan with those. Yep. In here, knowing that this area is obviously the vulnerable area, all of those need to move. Now, Obviously, we've got a few spaces underneath. We're going to leave that one open just because we're alongside it, just for the extra safety. We probably need to do some shuffling here as well. Yes, yeah, I suspect we do. I think cars are going to end up sort of in the middle down there somewhere, I suspect, once we've got everything under the lifts. So the go-to here is Vantage and DBS are certainly going to go under there. Lusso could but it sticks out a long way it's quite a long car and it's only when you're parking it under a lift you realize how long it is yeah so it's not ideal we do technically also have the space under the mezzanine we could put the car like wedged in the corner somewhere yeah because um, i mean the lift installation is going to stop you know roughly where the yeah, sf90 is right so to, i mean slightly further but somewhere about here so yeah all all of that space there is going to be perfectly safe the only other thing to think about is that the sf90 i'll use so that will stay over here Probably good to move some of the cars just here. I think so the Mini could probably pop next door as well, just for yes, now. Yes, so the Mini can go next door with these two. I think we should put, well, the Jag will never fit under the lift. No. Which one of these cars is best to put under the lift? On probably the, the GTA, I would say. Yeah, but that can stay where it is. True, okay, yeah, 675. Or maybe just the Lotus. Maybe we put- No, I, I want to take the Lotus out, so I want that accessible. I haven't okay. driven that So in we're not gonna wedge that at the back. No. Okay, so <laughs> preliminary plan, Vantage Roadster to the end. DBS to the next one. We'll leave that vacant for the moment. We'll wedge in front of those, probably. Center and GT, I think is probably logical, right? Yes. XJ220, we could just tuck back. We, we could arguably put that in the F1 space. Yeah, we could put that in the F1 space. That'd be cool. And we could just put the Lotus under there afterwards. Yeah, okay. Yeah, be that easy. works. Okay, well, I guess in that case- What are we case, doing first? I need to go and get some keys. Um, get some we'll keys. See. We'll get these two around the other side. That'll get them out of the way. Actually, do you know what? Let's have some startups. Let's do some of these. Let's do the Astons. Tom okay. returns with Aston keys. So I have a couple of keys and I'm going to let you decide what the first startup's going to be, but simply by left or right. Many months later. You need to actually pick one at some point. <laughs> They're going to get bored, Tim. That one. We are going for the V8 Vantage. I mean, they're the same key. So I don't <laughs> they're not actually, because we have the crystal key here and the valet key for the DBS. So it's still the same kind of key. Right, you're on it. Um, <laughs> so time to get the C-Tech unplugged and oh, then yeah, we can get on. a lovely cold start. Obviously everything is plugged into the good old C-Tech smart chargers, in this case, the CS1s. Yes, which are very clever. Amazing bits of kit. They have literally saved us so many times. We don't need to think anymore, just no, plug in and go. No, it's just in the right place. Off we go with it and obviously they work here as well, everything up to the height. All right, I'm ready when you are. Nice. First one done, nice and easy. Yeah, that actually really wasn't too bad. 
it's kind of you get used to it and one of the reasons we've gone with these lifts the band pack auto stackers and these are the a6ws is because they are that easy i mean that's not exactly a big car but you've got so much space yeah i mean something like that going up on the ramps is a little bit more scary but even then you've still got plenty of room yeah. either side you can fit super wide stuff anyway from one aston to the next aston yes let's go let's go same process we will make our way through all of this as efficiently as we can to clear the space and get it ready do you know how cool it's going to look i've probably just said this in yeah. the video at the beginning when we've got this complete run of oh it's going to be crazy here. it's like, going to be crazy having the four is mad having seven in a row okay you know you said dbs next yeah might have left the key in there give me a moment <laughs> Problem solved. Problem solved. Here's a DBS key. <laughs> I knew that. I did that on purpose just to give you a laugh because you're. To, yeah, I've not, I don't, I've not seen you laugh this much in a while. Just actually. for the audience to chuckle a little bit. Okay, round here. Oh yeah, we'll need to move all of this stuff. Yes. Yes, we will. Uh, yeah. Which at some point we are actually going to need to start using. Yeah, and we also need to take these chargers for these cars, but we'll go and fit those afterwards. Yes. It's going to be a weird. Helps if I unlock it, right? Yeah, it's generally. Not, it's not going well with the DBS right now. <laughs> oh well, V12 startup to follow. Oh, nice. Another one in place. Indeed. It's all so simple, this, isn't it? We get familiar with it. We know what we're doing now. Yeah, I think the first couple of times I've ever backed a car under here was interesting, shall we say, but I think we always feared it was gonna have to be a two person job. And it really isn't. It's also massively easier without going the four post route. Because if we'd gone yeah. the four post route, you'd have a post here, literally at the front. Yeah. And that makes manoeuvring, especially when you're you know, working with a restricted aisle, an awful lot harder. Yeah, because you've got to not catch the back post or the front. And not only that, just visually, I know we've said this so much, but visually, it's not the same effect with the four post. We've not had these loaded up for a while. And they look amazing. Yeah. Um, next, though, we need to take some cars to the other side. Yes, let's, let's go, go and get some more keys. E500, Clio, Mini, Bollards, Shutter. Let's get to work. Clio key, please. So, right, hang on. Hang no, no, on. no, just give me the Clio key. No. Because I know you want to drive the e Left or right? You pick a key. Left Clio's or right. on that side, so this one. Keys right. in the ignition. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I was just winding you up. <laughs> keys are in them. That was a good one, Tom. I'll give you that. <laughs> I thought you'd like that one. E500 start. Sweet, right, following you out. All right, and back in. Tim's going to take the Mini because obviously it's an EV, so I'm not going near it. <laughs> <laughs> it's become a bit of a thing, hasn't it? Hang on, hang on, hang on. We need the cold start. Yeah. Oh, well, at the moment we have key missing. Oh. There we go, got it. There we go. Oh, I didn't see. No, I was holding it out because the door was open. Ah, okay. Oh, now we've got all the beeps. Okay, so time for this one to go, and then we jump to next door. We've got cars, we've got a barn too. We're going in here and we've got to bring everything in, which means the shutter. It's not very busy in here. No, I, I was more curious what temperature wise was like in here, but it's okay. It's pleasant. Yeah, it's not bad considering it's a really warm day. Yeah. So we'll get this up and then we'll get some cars in. Actually, you might as well go and get the E500. On the way. On it. Nice swing. I, I thought that was quite well judged. That worked very well. Where are we going to put them? Uh, just along the back wall. Yeah, why not? Starting from the right. This is actually really cool. This is fun. We're using the second space. Am I straight? Enough. I mean, only you really know. Stop, stop, you're good, you're good. Don't need to hit the wall. <laughs> I wasn't trying to. I, I do have parking sensors. Hmm? I do have parking sensors. Yeah, perfect. They, they'll tell me before you do. That's good. <laughs> I won't tell you, you'll just go crunch. <laughs> no, but that's when the beeping starts. Well, with the tow bar, I don't know what would happen. I'm sure they account for the, Do they account for that? Anyway. No, no, I'm sure the parking sensors do, but what would happen? Would the wall get broken, given it's concrete, or would the car just stop moving? What would happen? There's only one way I to don't, find I don't want to find out. Okay. <laughs> Next. <laughs> in goes the beast. Suits you, Tom. Thank you. There was a large temptation to handbrake it in, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, we did a good job on the number plate there. That's gone wrong, hasn't it? I can hear the broken spring creaking. I can hear everything. Also, we've got no plate on the rear. No, we don't. But you know, it's not going anywhere for now. Can you I could... put this one into the wall? No, just, you're good. 
So Tom is back on the camera and we can hear wheel spin, which means only one thing. Tim's in the mini. <laughs> Tim, did you need to launch it? Yes, that was the rule. <laughs> okay, so time to get this one in and join the other two. And then I think that's everything. He's just treating this like a little racetrack, isn't he? I mean, fair play. Um, these three are in and then time to bounce back to barn number one, AKA the original Schmuseum and go and finish moving those cars around in there. We done. Have we got the first cars parked here for the time being? We have, that's Temporary. it. That's what I just said. These three are done and now it's time to, to bounce back to barn one. It's cool to have cars in here. Gives a sense of what you can actually fit. I think you can get seven along that wall comfortably. Yeah. I that's actually interesting because I didn't, in my head I was like seven might be a squeeze and I know these are small cars. Like, let's be real. Yeah, yeah but, but we've left still. fairly decent gaps. Yeah, seven cars. So seven, a middle row. We've got space. It's just cool. It's like we're duplicating this museum, but on a budget. <laughs> <laughs> so which one's first you, this is up Plan. to you. Yeah. Senna, there, because right-hand drive. Ford GT there, because left-hand drive. Okay, so back them both in. I think back them both okay, in. I think cool. then it's easy. Just pull forwards from here, back to there. And we end up leaving that whole space basically empty, which is a good thing. Technically, we could put the Jag under the mezzanine, tucked back there. We do have the Lusso as well, though. Let's not forget the Lusso. I Senna mean, I, first. I, I could always take it home for you just to, just to get it out the way and just daily it for the next few days if you wanted me to. If you want to pay the fuel bills. We'll find somewhere to put it. <laughs> It's a different world, isn't it, now? <laughs> oh, a couple of months ago, I would have said, yeah, fine, but nowadays, no. No, thank you. Right. Sweet. I would say that works very well. That works very well. Perfect. Good. Absolutely perfect. And it comes far enough back that we've still I'm going to remember to get the keys out of this one this time. Yeah, good. It's going to be quite funny having everything sandwiched back in. Is it GT time? I think someone really short has been driving this car. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Let's have a listen. Another one in position. Plenty of room for the door. Nice and easy. Yeah, yeah. Apart from the getting in and out. Easy is the word I would describe or use to when describe. When you're worrying about hitting something back here. Yeah. Carefully guided. Yeah, fortunately, when I've got you there to tell me when to stop, it's a lot less nerve wracking. And I should point out that this is all the kind of stuff that will end up through that wall in the not too distant future. Yes, there's still a load of boxes we haven't opened yet, which coming soon. Definitely. So two or three more, which we're putting where exactly? Decisions. Oh. Somewhere back here. I understand we have a switch. Yeah, rotate Oops. that. I'm assuming that way. No oh. idea. You've, you've gone for it. <laughs> we'll soon figure it out. That's fully opened, isn't it? Yeah, it that's is. as far as the door goes. Which is shocking. Again, I'll never get over something this big with this little space inside. Well, you've managed. Yes. We haven't started this in a while. No, so, uh, oh wait, doesn't help if you drop a key. I guess <laughs> it's the moment of, will it start? I want to run around towards the back. Well, we have some ignition. That's good. Right. Ready when you are. Let's get a clutch down and... I think that's pretty good. Yeah. If we nice thought job. it was fun me getting out the GT, this is gonna be this is gonna be really fun. <laughs> so, right. Wait, let me move the go-kart. Got that slightly in the way. Alright. Does sound good this thing. It's quite right. cool. Slide the seat back. Oh, something's ringing. My phone's going. Oh well, I'll worry about that in a second. <laughs> what did I, you say? I said someone short has been driving all of your cars. Funny that. <laughs> yeah. There we go, I can fit in this one now. Let's go start. Yeah, that's warm by the way, because we just had it out. Hence why we don't have the cold start running. I don't actually know where we're taking it. This is the only problematic car because it's so long with the doors that are so long and go pretty far back as well. About right. Uh, you can go back another six inches or something on that. Keep going, 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 stop. Perfect. There we go. Woo, that was brave. The Lusso is in. I think that's mission success for now. I think so. I think everything is as safe and out the way as it can be for now. We'll work out what we're doing with that in a moment. I'm taking that home. So let's rewind or fast forward back to present day. Yeah. 
Back to installation day, we need to move some cars around. Of course, over that away, we need to move the Lotus Elise because it's not really in an ideal position right there. Maybe we'll have to move the SF90 again in a moment. But the mistake that I made here, which I said at the beginning, is that I needed to do something with the C63 Black Series today, and it's up there. But thankfully, it's not where the GTR Roadster is or even where the Heritage RS is, because for either of those, I'd have to move the center in the GT and move the cars that are below. In this case, all we need to do is pull the Lusso out, pop the lift down, pull the C63 out, probably pop the Lusso back, and then go from there because we're at seven something in the morning. The lift guys aren't quite here yet, so we've got some time to do all of this before they arrive. I've got the keys, the two that I need. We've got the C, we've got the GTC4 Lusso. Just need to quickly unplug the chargers. Hopefully I can do this in literally a minute or two. Lusso swing out, lift down, C out, lift back up, Lusso back under, probably leave it up with nothing on it because we need to pop that on later and the Lusso is probably a touch on the long side. Feel slightly anxious about that going up. Um, but yeah, this shouldn't be too complicated to be honest. So what I need to do is grab this, make sure everything's out of the way comfortably, which it will be. Open up the door, cold start, get my shuffle on. It's always just easier than you think it should be. Not too bad. Let's have a cold start. Next one, this is actually so much smoother and more simple than I ever originally thought it would be. Turn the lift on, up to release the latches. It's one of the reasons why we're going with exactly this lift for everywhere else, because it works for this purpose brilliantly. Super easy to use, very wide lifts, takes minimal time. It would help if I remember to unlock the car before I do this, because otherwise the alarm goes off the motion sensor, but at least it's doing what it should. Um, I disappear around the back. And yes, this lowers itself down just on a very simple, regular installation. All on the electrics, done. Lift off, unplug the charger, which is just under the boot floor back here. Got our extensions, makes it very easy. And then pop that down there because that's good for the moment. All right, ready to climb up and have another start. This time the C63 Black Series. Let's do it. Lift is back up, Lusso back into place. Hey, just becomes a smooth, simple enough system. Right, Lusso is done. So next up, I need to move the Lotus and the C next door, but that should be easy. And then we'll be pulling in the truck with parts ready for the lifts. Right, barn two, come on in. Quite windy today. We'll work out where we're gonna park the C63. But with the other cars, I think the idea is to use our intended workshop space. So kind of right here. Um, we've got to figure out what the best way to maneuver it in is, but kind of here, Tom, kind of here. That doesn't work. I might have to reevaluate this one. If that's how the turning circles work, we're never going to get it to the wall. Maybe a new plan. We'll just dump it there for the moment and work this out later. There's no dignified way to climb out of the little Lotus. Okay. Progress, back round to the other side. Exciting progress. We have some lifts that have arrived. The team from LiftMaster are now here. It's time to get unloading. Carefully doing it with the forklift to get all of these unloaded in the barn, laid out into position. But we have the sets of the auto stackers. Two boxes per stacker. Ours are the A6Ws, which are the effectively extra wide ones, perfectly suited to supercar -y type stuff. Then we'll get everything, I suppose, measured out, make some progress, get ready to get these installed. Which is gonna take a couple of days for the full process, but very exciting to imagine what this is gonna look like when we've got 14 cars across the seven auto stackers. I feel like it's gonna be very smooth given we know what we're doing and we've measured it all out effectively when we did these first ones. We planned exactly how it was going to be with the next 
ones to come. So measuring out the space at the end, for example, to give just enough room to walk around at the back, all of that kind of thing. Um, I'll just get all of these unloaded. Obviously the car's safely out of the way, but looking very shiny and nice. Exciting times. In comes the third of the lifts. So we've got the three auto stackers to be installed, delivered in parts, then to get those obviously unloaded as well, but swift progress already, to be honest, getting everything unloaded. Obviously lots of packaging to be disposed of as part of the process, but this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be really, really cool. Around in barn two then, let me explain a little bit why we've come around here and why the C63 AMG Black Series is parked a little bit in the middle of the room where it is right at this moment in time because I've been planning out a little bit how to use this space. As I said, when we moved here, there was nothing here. In fact, this side was completely open. It was a collecting yard for the cattle. It wasn't really intended to be something like this. Now I've been plotting out multiple ways to use this area and it is super cool to have the four cars parked there along with the electric go-kart as well to give an idea of what this is going to be like because my idea is basically to have a partition about here to separate this into a few different spaces. Then on this side to have the storage, you can see we'll fit about seven cars over on that opposing wall. And where I'm standing, we'll have another five cars or so leaving a gap obviously to drive in. So we'll have 12 cars able to be stored here. I'm not sure about lifts because we actually have slightly less clearance to the rafters on this side than we do over on the other side because the floor sits about 70 centimeters higher. So in answer to some of your questions about having a ramp or a connecting door or a way to move the cars between, to have a ramp to do that, it would need to be six, seven or eight meters long. And obviously even longer, if you want better clearance for low cars, we'd lose so much space that it's better to take them outside. And it also fits more with the plans that I have for the storage there, but also for what's gonna happen here. So we'll have an interconnecting link area where we'll add a kitchenette next to the toilets that we have back there and a bit of a storage room. And then when I'm standing here, the reason that's in the spot that's in at the moment is because we've been testing this out. The idea is to have two bays in our workshop, to have the tools, to have all the equipment, to have a more long-term bay here for a longer project, and to have a space here where we will install a two-post lift, and that shouldn't be too long now, to do some routine maintenance, things like when the team come to service the Zenvo, they can pop it up on the lift here and do that work directly in-house. And that's why we've parked this car here to get a bit of an idea of exactly where that's going to be, but also to carry out our first little modification. Believe it or not, my C63 AMG Black Series is now a 12 year old car. This Schmimobile is over a decade old, which is crazy to me because it feels like just yesterday that they launched this variant of the W204 C63, added it to the Black Series family, and I started to spot them and to see them around. And while I've only owned the car for about one year of that, about 12 months, it's a car that's seen some great miles, plenty of good years of driving. And it's a car that, while I might not necessarily daily drive it, I I want to be able to depend upon it. I want it to be reliable. I want it to be a case that if it's been hibernating for a while, I go up to the car, turn the key, and it fires up instantly. We get plenty of oomph out of that V8, especially for a high performance car like this with a gigantic engine. You want it to be something that always performs at its best. And as such, the first change or modification that we've made to a Schmimobile here in the new, I'm gonna say the new workshop, the future workshop, is to have upgraded it to a new Odyssey battery. Come and take a quick look at what we have here. Pop open the boot or the trunk, depending where you're from. Lift up this very convenient latch, it has to be Dead, which holds on just there and we have our new Odyssey AGM2 TPPL high performance battery fitted in place. It's a battery that effectively delivers the capability of two batteries in one. It offers a deep cycle capacity needed to support the C63's electronics while also providing a massive starting power to fire up the engine time and time again. It can offer twice the power of conventional batteries and can last three times longer and also Odyssey batteries recharge even faster than any other sealed lead battery on the market, recharging to 100% in just four to six hours. It is a very, very welcome upgrade to this car. As I said, it's a car that I might not necessarily drive all of the time, but every time I do drive it, I want to be able to just turn the key for the car to have the battery working correctly, to have full charge, thanks to keeping it on a charger, to be able to take it out and drive. Because 
let's be real, it's a C63 Black Series. It's for enjoying, and that has been the first modification or change that we've made here, thanks to Odyssey Battery. Given we've got a few works to do, we've had another delivery. We needed to get a scissor lift so we can get up to the roof for alarms on the other side, cameras, a few adjustments, because with the rooms we've got installed, we've got to put a few more cameras in, obviously. So yeah, we just had this dropped off, which means I'm now about to try and drive this past my SF90 Stradale, which I don't know if that's the wisest idea ever, but bear with me, we'll see how it goes. Climb up in here and um, give this a little tester. So turn it on, hit the button here, wait for it. There we go. And in we go. Carefully does it. Sorry for the beeping. Anybody smart would actually have just moved the Ferrari. We're good. We're good. I got this. Got it down. I'm gonna park it over here for the moment. Done. Off. Alrighty. I don't know if there's an easy way down. That kind of works. All right, so progress on this front, as you can see, everything's been laid into place, is all going super smoothly. This is fabulous. We've been working on a few other things, but meanwhile, have a look at the progress here. Initially today is getting out all of the equipment and lining them up to get an idea exactly of the spacing before the final adjustments. But the speed with which these two have been assembled, well, it's still the morning. Um, yeah, pretty impressed with that. Obviously unpacking everything, working it all out, leaving that one just down to help with the line. But yeah, very, very impressive. Just the final one being unloaded now off the trailer, all of the old parts and box and packaging being taken away as well. And then it will be a fairly extended process to finish the installation. As you can imagine, the flat floors take a significant amount of time. Obviously the benefit of these is you've got this super low ramp angle, which for any of these cars is not a problem. They all manage to get up without even needing lift systems, which is wonderful. And when they are down on the ground, even when they've got cars parked on them, it looks very smart because there aren't any like four posts, you know, just obstructing the view without much benefit. That's one of the reasons why I really, really like the auto stackers and went for these. And having the run of seven of them along here is gonna look mega impressive when that's all done. Super, super excited to see the finished effect of them all in not that long. I'm actually quite excited to get an idea of where the third one's gonna come up to. I've measured about two and a half meters or so that we'll have of space here. And who knows what exactly we're gonna use that for down the line, all to be worked out. Not a bad start, hey? Not a bad start at all. We've just been causing trouble. I mean, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> Using the scissor. The uh, new Schmimobile. The new Schmimobile. It is Schmi Blue, quite literally. It is. I think it's basically the same thing. It's not the same one that we had last year, but it's the same thing that we had last year. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, it might be the same one. How do we know? I would suggest people should be more responsible than we are, but we have been bombing around and sorting out some stuff in the rafters, so we can't complain too much, right? We've been quite sensible. We've followed health and safety. True the most important things. Yes. I appreciate that they've taken away or they're taking away all this stuff and it's all strapped down. It, it's really lovely how the guys here, I mean, again, they constantly clean up after themselves. They actually yes. asked me for a hoover and a, and a dustpan and brush earlier yeah. to make sure they could clean up as they go. Which is really appreciated. And they have their brand new 2022, like brand new vans and trucks as well. And, and again, it's absolutely lovely. I know it may just be a van. You want a van. I do. You need like a, a Shmi van. I do like a transit, yeah. I a mean, Shmi van of some description. A van of some form would be lovely. I'm also pleased with how all of that moving around, and I know we did a lot of shuffling around to get the cars all parked here. We did it right. We did we what did. we needed to do. No, it is. Apart from it, it's me worked. forgetting to see, but anyway, yeah, we sorted that out. The guys out. walked in this morning and said, have we got space? Oh my God, that's perfect. Yes, so literally. It, yeah. Um, and look at this. Number three is basically in place and they're just gonna shuffle them along to make sure they're exactly where they need to be. Then they bolt them down to the ground. Then the floors go in. The electrics have to be done. The, I mean, that's it. That's it, yeah, and then they're it's, done. It's scary probably on this video how easy that looks, yep. but there's actually quite a lot to it. I think it's just much more of a system because of having done, <laughs> having done those ones before. So Yeah, I think they've been able to walk in and again, they haven't had to like, 
<laughs> they, they haven't had to measure up or do angles because right. they've had all of the previous ones. And <laughs> even though it's noisy, come with me, because it gives us a sense of what we have here now with the third one positioned. And this is what I always had in mind. It's basically an open space area, but if we ever needed to squeeze a little car. We've got the space to do so. Yeah. That's yeah. the idea. Maybe. This Ma wasn't a good time. Maybe it? we wait for the guys to finish bottling this one together and then show them what it looks like in place. Because they've yeah, kind I'm, of seen it, but not really. I'm thinking that there's a room there for a particularly small old British car down the line. Hmm. I think I might see where you're going with that one. Something missing. More on that soon, maybe. I'm probably getting ahead of myself, as always. Anyway, we'll see how this goes on. We're doing some moving again. More moving, more moving. I have a Ferrari key, which I've obviously grabbed because you've said this needs to move. We need to do something with the Lusso. So the Lusso is going to come forwards. We're going to pop the C63 back up there because a lot of progress has been made. We're towards the end of the day now. And in fact, we've put some of the cars back because there are no more trucks and things coming in here. So Tom is squeezing into the Lusso. Cold start time. Are we off the trickle? We are. We, are we? No, you might need to check that I'm one, actually. And... I think we did it earlier, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I did put it on. Okay. And it was just for a short period, so ready to start when you are. <laughs> Lovely. Goodness, that It's always out. a good noise, that. I can't hear him, but <laughs> thumbs up. The C63 returns. I have a V8. Where do you want it? On the left. Okay. On. Auto you did say that. Yeah. Number three. I think we're going to number them from that end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That might change, but that's the plan for the time being, at least. So plan I, with the Lasso. I happen to have a Ferrari key. Again. Again. Deja vu. Yes, because when we picked it up from Topaz, I noticed that the front left tire pressure was a little bit low and pulling to a little bit and even you noticed that when you took it for a drive it was genuinely fascinating basically the front left is only 0.3 bar lower than the front right yes which i think but is it's two psi it's it, not a huge uh, it must amount. be a tiny bit more but That's it's not, not it, it was enough that yeah. we could feel it which is quite unusual i didn't think such a small amount would be possible but basically no. when you've left cars standing for a while okay you can... so that should be 30 psi yeah i'm quite proud of this one 28. Okay, what's <laughs> the other side? PSI. What's the other side? Let's go and have a look. This I'm is... going to guess it's probably I'm going to guess 31. 29.8. That's a bit pedantic and precise. <laughs> you normally like things like that. 29.8. Oh, 31.3. 31.3, I'll take okay. that. So it's 3.3 so bar down. That one's actually down. over by 1.3. Is that what it's supposed to Really? 30 and 29. Is that what they're supposed to be? Correct. You would know more than me. Is it on this yes. side or the other side? Uh, it's on the other side. Typical. <laughs> it's always on whichever side you didn't go to first. Yes, yeah, it's always on the last side. On this side then. Is it or is it in the fuel cap? No, no, it's on, it's on the door. It's on the door. I promise you. Oh yeah, here we go. What does that say? Two bar, 30 PSI at the front. 29 at the rear. 29 at the rear. Interesting. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Never doubt. Never oh, doubt full send. That's gone wrong. What are we? 29.1. So that oh. is, we've got one of them that's pretty much bang on. So we're, it's only really like the front left that's just a touch under. Yeah, that one's a touch under. And then I think probably what, what didn't aid in us feeling it pulling is that one slightly over. So yeah. you funny. put those two together and, and actually... It's, I guess it, effen it effectively gives this one a deficit of like just over three PSI. So yeah. it kind of makes sense. I, I'm genuinely surprised though. And it's probably due because the, the Lusso and the FF have very aggressive front camera, camera setups. Yes. Because of the weight. Yeah. It disguises the weight of the front, the weight of the car by doing so. It means the tires don't last all that long. No, I know that one. Not on the inside edge at least. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. And in this case, that amount of difference was something we could spot. So we'll inflate that. Yep. And then we'll start the swap around again. Yep. And that goes up. And that goes back under, I guess? Probably. And then Not too the SF90 goes nowhere because I know you're taking that home already. Yep. I've lined it up. Yeah. And that will be where we pack up for the day. You, whether you've lined it up or not, it's all you drive. Oh, no, no, we won't pack up because I need to go and show everyone in here. Over here, we've had a bit of a building session. Compressor running in the background. We have more Lego than I know what to do with. 
um, the expansion of the dioramas. These are quite fun, the Porsche set with the 917 and the 919. And we've also got a couple of other Formula E car and whatnot around. The Ferrari diorama with the two 488 Challenge cars, 250 GTO, F40 and the old F1. The Mercedes setup with the two F1 cars there and plenty more. Um, what else have we done? The McLaren F1, the Ferrari 488 GTE and a whole lot of shuffling and moving around and obviously these two to work on. In fact, not very many unbuilt sets here. There are a couple of other sets that I need to bring in. The only problem is after building three more cabinets, I'm out of space again. It's all completely filled and that's going to be a dilemma. I don't know. Well, probably going to have to figure out a new way of having some out here somewhere before that's all done. Jump ahead a moment and everything is now in place for the night. Everything that needs to be on this side is back on this side. And that progress has been phenomenal. We still obviously have quite a bit to go to finish everything up, but it's just exciting to make progress here at the Sch Museum, to do things, to build it more into the dream garage, everything that this place was or is supposed to be. We have a lot still to be done, but having that second area and the ideas that are swirling through my mind as to what we can do with it is so exciting. And I feel that I have a better understanding having been here at home for a longer period of what I want to do and how to go about it in terms of the rooms and the materials. And in fact, in the next update with this being completed, we'll also have some other things going on as well to do with the next parts of the build, to do with what we're gonna be doing next. So it is all very, very exciting. Anyway, a big thanks, of course, to Ben Pack Auto Stacker for the opportunity to be able to install these lifts here. Absolutely fabulous. Also, of course, to Odyssey battery for the upgrade that we have in the C63 Black Series. That's it for this time though. Thanks as always, until next time.